This podcast is part of the Shareable Podcast Network. Learn more at shareable.fm. Not every guest takes me up on the opportunity, but I like to do a segment called The Mic Swap, where I make my guest into the host, and then I become the guest. I let them take the conversation wherever they want to take it, ask me whatever they want, and uh, it's a lot of fun, I think. This is Mic Swap. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Shareable Podcast. My name is Pablo Ambrosio. I am so excited. Um, I'm going to be talking to somebody who I've only met recently, but I have a feeling I will know for a very, very long time. Everybody say hello to Jeff. Jeff, say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. So, Jeff, um, I, have a, I have a series of questions that I love to ask people. I use this inside of my business um, the, uh, the first one is something called the big six. Now, the goal of the big six is for you to describe in the best possible detail what your best self slash best life is, yep. um, with the end goal being us creating something called an axiom, which will be this thing that reminds you of your answers. So I'm really pumped to hear your answers. I'll say the question, and then you take as much time as you want answering it, okay? Okay, I'm in. All right, so question number one. If you were living your best life slash being your best self, what would be different in your home life? And what I mean by home life, how would you best, how would you, how would you uh, interact differently with the people you love the most? I think that if I was living my best life uh, at home, I would, um, I would handle more of the workload um, in terms of the, the responsibilities of the house. I, I do a lot as it is, but like I would do more in terms of keeping the house organized, keeping it clean. And I would do all of that because I would want the people that I love in my life that live in this home to feel more comfortable, to have more mental clarity, not living amongst clutter, um, to feel like they didn't have as much stuff to do so that they could focus on the things that they wanted to do. I would want to free them up you know, mentally and just in terms of their time so that they could do the things that they really want to. And then I think as in terms of the relationship, not just in terms of the actions, but in terms of the relationship, I think that I would want to have more mental bandwidth. I would have more mental bandwidth in this scenario to spend more time just being with them and not being distracted by the responsibilities of work and by, um, you know, just constantly thinking about what it is that I have to accomplish to keep the bills paid and keep, you know, roof over the head and all the things that I have to do. I think I would want to, I would want to be more, um, deeply interested and curious and have the space to be that way with both uh, my wife and uh, once my daughter can start talking with my daughter. Dude, as a dad, when they can start talking it, and this is, this everybody's different for me. It was like, it wasn't even real until he could talk and all of a sudden he could talk and I was like, Oh my God, this is a person. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have um, sort of like, I would say like uh, fractional moments of that in the, when she can understand certain words uh, now she can give you a kiss on command. Like you say, like, you know, give me a kiss and she'll, she does this thing where she puts her whole mouth on my nose and I just like, I melt into like <laughs> yeah, a puddle of dad. Um, so those things are happening. And then there's like her attempts at saying words and uh, yeah, it's all just amazing. You know how it is. You've been, you've been through yeah. that process. I'm it's great feeling. currently in the midst of it and it's phenomenal. It's my favorite. All right. Good. Good answer. Um, all right. So question number two is same framing. You know, if you're living your best life slash being your best self, what would be different at work in your work life. So what I mean by this is your daily responsibilities, the stuff that you must get done daily, weekly, monthly. I, I think the the best possible version of it, the number one word that crosses my mind is freedom. Freedom in choosing how I and choice, freedom and choice in how I allocate the time of my day. If I want to take the day off entirely, I would love to be able to do that in this scenario. If I wanted to spend the day deep working on one particular project. I would do that. Um, it would be playing entirely by my own rules and no one else's responsibilities that I would have to deal with. Um, I spend a lot of my time now working with clients and I love working with my clients. and I love the impact that I can make working with my clients, but oftentimes the responsibilities that show up on my calendar and the deliverables and things that have to be done, um, you know, they have to fit inside of my existing schedule. Whereas I would prefer in my best life, I would I would make up my entire schedule. I would make up every single day of my schedule. And while I've crafted a certain schedule now, it would be entirely open with freedom and choice. That would okay. be my best life. All right. Good answer. Good answer. All right. So now uh, third one is what would be different in the way you deal with yourself? So that internal monologue. I would definitely give myself, I would calm the hell down. 
I would relax. I would stop putting quite as much pressure on myself in this world. I would feel like I could finally breathe and um, not be beholden to so many different responsibilities. Instead, I, I feel like I would give myself the space to play a video game. I would go to the gym more than two days a week and I would um, you know, make my health more of a priority. I would get a full night's sleep every night. Um, so it would be a lot of those sorts of things where I would just overall take better care of myself. And I feel like I would have a, a, a more clear mental state. Like I think any of the, the things that I deal with uh, as a result of the stress of the way things currently are, um, would be replaced by other stressors. But I think that they're ones that I'd be, I'd be welcome with open arms. Um, so I, I'd like to stop feeling guilty about doing things that are for me. So it sounds like, so a, a word that I would say is, uh, and this is very common, right? So I, I do this I don't know, four or five times a day. Um, and, you know, you know, ambitious people, people who are the kind of people who, you know, it's all or nothing. I got to get this done. I do this. I want to do this. I want to do that, um, which I can completely relate to. Um, it's this idea of being present, right? I think there's a, a, a theme in your three answers is this idea of being present. And I think that's super difficult to do when yeah. you have a tremendous amount you're trying to do, you know, when you're in front of your mom, your, your, your wife or your son, or in your case, your daughter is being a hundred percent there and yes. not like even 80% there, but 20% of your brain is going, well, there's that time. And I got to write this email and I got to do this thing gotta, and learning how to just being like, uh, uh-uh. my attention and focus is only here right now. It's so, that's um, so, it's that really hard it's so hard because, so I take Fridays off to watch my daughter, uh, which is something that I feel very lucky that I've, you know, structured my time to be able to do. So I work four days a week. So what happens is I hit like Thursday and I'm like, oh, thank God I get to hang out with my daughter tomorrow. I'm so excited. And I get to Friday and I'm hanging out with my daughter. And I'm thinking about all the things that I have to get to next yeah, week. And you're not actually doing the thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, do. exactly. So it's like, no matter what, I'm always thinking at the next thing. So it's like, I'm partly spending time with my daughter on Thursday nights when I'm thinking about spending time with her rather than when I'm actually spending time with her. Um, and it's not that way the whole time. It's just that there's so many moments of that where I feel like I'm not actually in this moment enjoying this. And then every once in a while, she'll just do something that just snaps me back into it. Like she'll look at me and smile or do something goofy. And I'm just like, what, what am I thinking about? Why am I not right here right now? Right now. Yeah. What's going to be, a, I, and by, I'm going to say a benefit because it is, but it's also where, unfortunately, a lot of times parents disconnect to their child is uh, around that six, seven, eight, where they start becoming like their own little person. Mm-hmm. Because look, they really are their own little person. My son knows if I'm not there like mentally he'll even be like you all right homie like is everything okay like what's up awesome you know and and they'll remind you and they'll tell you like is everything okay daddy like is everything because they can sense that you're not there in that moment because they're so in the moment because there's nothing for us for them to do that they will feel when you're not and so it's good because it's a nice reminder but it's also you know, you are an adult, you have all these expect expectations on yourself and you start going, listen, man, I got, I got, I got a mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So question f- uh, four, what are three words you would use to describe your best life? Now it's important. These adjectives, I do not care what Webster dictionary, Oxford dictionary definition is. It's whatever you want those words to mean. So think of the three and then give us the definition of those words. Oh man. So the two of them are going to go together beautifully because they are, they are opposites. So the first one I would say would probably be structured. And the second one I would say would be uh, free or choice, I guess, choice. Right. So um, I don't know if you ever heard like Jocko Willink's thing, like discipline I love is freedom. Jocko yeah. The yeah. discipline is freedom thing. Like when I first heard that, I was like, that's stupid. And then I thought about it. And I was like, nah, that's brilliant. Um, so like it's partly, in my basement, I have a gym in my basement and yeah. I have his poster right sitting right over the squat rack. Yeah. So let me actually, let me say my third before I get back to that. But like, um, I would say structured is one, uh, choice would probably be the second. And the third word to describe, um, is meaningful. Um, words. yeah. Good so words. like, I, I think my ideal life looks like I ha I am very much a product of creating structure for myself. 
Um, I'm very organized with my task, with my digital stuff, like all that sort of stuff. I'm very organized. Um, on the other hand, I really like to go where kind of the dopamine takes me, right? Like, cause I have a lot of interests. I have a lot of things that I like to do. I work in, uh, in blitzes. Sometimes I work kind of very, like, you know, bits here and there, but mostly I work in like blitzes. So I like to be able to have the choice of how I allocate my time, but at the same time, it needs to be a very structured way of, of ordering my time so that I get to feel like I'm getting the most out of what I'm doing. So both structure and choice. And then the meaningful side is that basically I'm driven entirely by the idea that like, if this is my only shot at life, which is how I live my life, then I want it to make an impact. I want to leave, even if it's the tiniest dent on the world that I leave behind, that has made the world progressively in some way a little bit better. So I would want to use that structured and free choice time to, to, do, to do something that is meaningful, whether that be in some cases meaningful in terms of the impact I have on my daughter's life, like, you know, being able to walk her to school or like any of the things that would come out of being like a great dad, meaningful in how I impact on my wife and being a great husband, and then meaningful in terms of the work I do, being able to use that time that I have, being structured about applying it and choosing where I want to, where I want to spend that time to do something that matters. Yeah, that's great. I mean, like the idea, the, the, the dichotomy of discipline and freedom is my dad used to say that to us when we were little. And I used to be like, you're crazy. I don't, I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. And it yeah. didn't take me until I was an adult to be like, oh, I get it now. Now I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you think of discipline as a kid as, you know, you're being yelled at or like not doing stuff because you don't, you can't, because some guy told you you couldn't. Um, it's not until you actually self-discipline. Like yeah, it's yourself. the external versus the internal. Yeah. I think and all that's, of a sudden, where, that's where I've had issues with it in the past is like, I don't do well with authority. So discipline to I. me was, was <laughs> something where like discipline something that comes from the outside, somebody kind of trying to confine me. No, no, that's not how it works. Like no. when you start to think about discipline as something that you can impose upon yourself to live the type of life you want now, it's like, well, now I have freedom to work within that because I've set these structures. Now I can play. So yeah, I, uh, I'm about that. No, I completely agree. All right. So then uh, now you're going to take those three. So the fifth question is you take those three adjectives and, and don't give this too much thought in the sense of like really structuring a sentence, but I want you to take it and create a couple of sentences that use those words to describe your best life. Now, now that you've defined them, feel free to use those definitions as part of the sentences. Got it. So I'm using the three words and I'm trying to create a think like a mission statement for yourself. Yeah. So, um, I plan to live a life of structure and discipline that allows me to have the freedom and choice to do things that create a meaningful impact in the world. Perfect. Right. Short, sweet. Now you just have just do it and a swoosh and you're in. (laughs) (laughs) Um, All right. So the last one is to create your axiom. So I want you to think of your answers really kind of, okay. Now that you have that in your mind, this idea of your best self, best life, Create an I am statement. So a sentence that starts with I am and finish a sentence however you want. I would, I would, I would uh, uh, invite you to keep it as short as possible because in terms of its utility, uh, its ability to be used, you want it quick, right? So we're going to use this in exercise. We're going to use this in a bunch of different ways. When you're panting, you don't want to have to say a paragraph, right? You want to be able to say I am blah, and then, you know, continue going. Um, But it should be undeniably positive and undeniably true. And feel and understand nothing you're saying right now is in stone, right? Yeah, you're going to use this and like change I, it and change it and change it. Change yeah, it. I, I do a lot of work in brand. That's about where I spend about like 85% of my time is like brand and then brand inspired leadership. So like for me, like I'm like, oh, brand purpose, brand promise, like of all the different things floating through my head. And now I'm like, okay, one word. And I'm like, I've got a hundred different words in my head right now, which is the right one. The, I, I'd say that the first one that kind of uh, came to mind is like when I put those three things together, And I think about what is the output of it, which is kind of how I arrived at what I would say the axiom is, is like, I am impactful, right? Okay. I am impactful. Good one. Like that. Yeah. That's kind of the first thing. And like, I obviously like, you know, something to do with superheroes would always be there, but like, I, I think I am impactful because that's ultimately what the goal is of having the structure of having the freedom and of doing work that's meaningful is like, I want to make impact. So I am impactful would be the way that I would think of it. This first thing that came to mind. We can always play with it, but. No, that's a great one. That's a very good one. Hey, it's really short and it, it really nicely sums up what you were talking about. All right, so that usually, I would stop at that question, mm-hmm. right? Um, but I have another one for you that is gonna be, um, 
I, because of the whole superhero thing. Now, yeah. when I say that I'm a, a superhero fan and, and I've been reading comics my whole life and I still read them, I still have, a, a, I have the app to, to the Marvel universe and I still read them. Do you have the unlimited or do you have the other one? I have the unlimited. Yeah. It's pretty awesome that you can just like go in there and just like, go in and what, read whatever yeah. I want. And I love yeah, reading the old awesome. ones and the new ones. I actually, um, I almost exclusively read like silver and gold age comics. Um, so like I went back to the beginning of the incredible Hulk and started reading from like the first one that it's they just have on very it. cool to see how the it's characters awesome. progress and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I like, I, I will say this. There's some great storylines that are pretty new. Like Hulk has a great one. The world, um, not world beater immortal. World War, no, world, where he uh, gets, I get Planet Hulk. It starts with Planet the Planet Hulk, Hulk yeah, yeah. and then it comes back where he comes back as the world, world crusher or whatever they end up calling. Yeah. Him. He almost literally destroys the whole planet. It's just very cool. But anyway, yeah. um, so now that you have an idea of what your best life is and you have this in the forefront of your mind, and I know Spider Man is your favorite. I told you, I heard the episode, yep. and Spider Man is in my top three. He's not my favorite, but he's in my top three. Um, and the answer can be Spider Man, but you're going to have to give a reason. Which superhero or combination of superheroes? is closely is most closely either have inspired or is living your best life that was not the angle i thought you were going to take on that all right curveball the character that is living spider-man is not living my best life no i i I, I say and i'm asking this question for a reason i'll I'll, I'll go after i'll go after yeah i i so ready remember i said or is inspiring a part of and it could be a combination it could be like you know i'd say captain america's integrity and so and so self sacrifice or whatever, but okay. what what combination really inspires? Because I really think that if you're a comic book fan, it's because it spoke to you. It wasn't because yeah. it was just cool. Oh, dude, there's so much. Uh, there's so much here. There's so so much here. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, ready. like we're gonna Go do this. Um, Spider Man's integrity, uh, his you know willingness to to do the right thing. Uh, Steve Rogers self-sacrifice mentality. Um, the I love uh, the fact you said Steve Rogers and not Captain America, by the way. Yeah, well, I need to be specific about yeah. it. No, I, I agree. You know, Completely I have to agree. Be very clear about it. Um, I would say Magneto's. I know I went with villain on that one, but it's kind of important here. He's um, not, he's another perfect example of someone who thinks he's doing the right thing for actually really good reasons, just going about it all wrong. Yeah. So that, that's kind of one I want to point out his, his, um, I would say his desire for anti-discrimination. Is that a, is that a yeah, good way of I mean, characterizing? Ab- like he absolutely. doesn't, he doesn't want mutants to be discriminated against. I think he's going about it all wrong, but I think that he is, uh, he is gathering people together in a movement, and I appreciate that he. Well, have you read the comics where he actually takes over the Savage Land and the utopia he creates there? I have not seen that. Dude, it's, uh, a, it's a pure utopia. Like literally, there's no crime. There's no. There's no. There's nobody's hungry. Everybody's an equal. The, like it's like this incredible. And it, what's beautiful about the storyline is here's this guy who's willing to commit absolute atrocities. Who when things are the ideal. He's the perfect fucking leader. Yeah. He's perfect. I mean, it's like he just nails it and nails it and nails it. And it's own it's his villainy, his his bad the, the things about him that are not great come out when things aren't going in the ideal. And it's just a very cool that kind of sorry, sorry. So you picked the no, great no, character. I dig, so that, I dig that. So that's another one. Okay. Um, okay, so so we've got uh Spider-Man's integrity, we've got Steve Rogers self-sacrifice, we've got Magneto's movement building. Um and then I would say um, Rogue's ability to acquire new abilities. Okay, so like her, almost like our superpower empathy, like like, like that almost. Um, it's partly, but it's more like literally just her building her ability to just bolt on new, like to grow like limitlessly by Wait. just. So like I, I have another podcast that um, that I do called Rogue where it's I'm trying to steal other people's superpowers through conversation. I want to know okay. what makes you tick and what makes you do the things you do so well. And I want to put it on display so other people can learn it and they can grow. To me, you look at Rogue, she just literally touches someone and she's like, now I can fly. Yeah. So for me, if I could just like learn a new language because I touched a French book, like that's that's to me would be such an amazing best life for me is like the ability to do that. Um so yeah, I think that, and then if, you know, shit was just shits and giggles will add to it. I want Tony Stark's wealth because I can do a lot. I can do <laughs> a lot with it. that. <laughs> it's not, it definitely wouldn't hurt. 
Yeah. Um, all right. Very cool answer. Very, very cool answer. I could um, pro- th- th- like, seriously, I yeah, feel you like that, keep, could be, that could be an entire podcast episode of us just like geeking out about that. What but. I love about superheroes and about a lot of the answers you gave is I remember a long time ago, this, a girlfriend of mine, this is years before, like many, many years before I met my wife. Um, very pretty, but like we didn't jive. Like we were together simply because I was in really good shape and, you know, fighting and she was pretty. I mean, like, that's literally where the, con- the relationship was. Mm-hmm. And um, she never understood the comic book thing. Like she would always be like, I don't get it. It's for kids. And I, I came up with an answer once that I now pull like a gun. Um, and by the way, one of the reasons why I knew my wife was the one, and there was a lot of them. I mean, there's Pablo before Marlene and there's Pablo after Marlene. She has made me an infinitely better person, right? Um, but with, with the, the, the line when people ask me why, why comic books is, what makes comic books awesome is that they are a reminder that there is good in the world, right? They are an opportunity to realize that there's good in the world, our heroes on this planet, right? These are fictional ones, but when you boil that person down, when you boil Spider-Man down or Steve Rogers down, it's character traits that make them the superhero. Because more often than not, the heroes are actually underpowered compared to the bad guys. Yeah. Right? What makes them a superhero is who they are as a person. It's not their abilities. And that's, to me, the whole reason why it's so awesome, right? Yeah. yeah, of course. It's cool to watch them fight and do dope stuff and all that crap. And absolutely, I'm all in for that stuff. But ultimately, it's their human side that makes it amazing, right? And why I think it's so important that kids get into superheroes. And I introduce superheroes to my son is that it's the humanity of them that makes them truly the hero. And it's not the fact that they can, you know, have a spider sense or heal immediately from the most grievous wounds or shoot lasers out of their eyes or whatever. Yeah, dude, I agree with you. I'll I'll tell you for me. And like, this came up like two years ago when I started going back and seeing a therapist, like we talked through all different stuff and like started talking about different things. I revealed to her that every time I ever see a superhero being saved or helped by someone else, like, you know, Mary Jane comes in and helps Spider-Man out or Pepper Potts comes in and saves Tony Stark because he was vulnerable at the time. It gets me like it gets me deep in me because seeing someone super powered be vulnerable and accept help from somebody else and to see them be resilient in the face of like overwhelming odds against them. That is the thing that for me most resonates about superheroes is I have trouble showing vulnerability. I have uh, had to be resilient in the face of a lot of different things in my life as, as we all do. And those are the things that inspire me and keep me coming back to the stories is they remind me to keep getting back up to go make a difference. Like to, to no matter what happens that you have the opportunity, if you choose to take it, to keep getting back up and going out there and trying to make sure that the world's world's a better place. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite scenes, I am not, I I actually didn't hate the uh, Spider-Man movies with, um, Tom Holland? No, or... yeah, no, no. I actually, I, they were okay. I thought they were okay. I, I think inside the MCU, it, it fits really, really yeah. nicely. I like the fact that Tom was kind of a dork. I, I like yeah. all that. Um, no, the the first movies. What's oh, his name? Um, uh, uh, Tobey Maguire. Yeah, I, I I know those catch a lot of flack. I actually, the first two in particular, I thought I really liked. Phenomenal. The third one, okay, whatever. But like, I really liked the first two. My favorite scene, one of my favorite scenes in any comic book movie is when he's stopping the train and he st- and then he passes out from the exertion and they, they realize that he's just a kid. Yep. And instead of like, you know, oh my God, we know who Spider-Man is. They put the mask back on him and carry him out. I, that scene, I just- Yeah, me too, man. Yeah, no, I get it too. And I, I thought you were gonna, so uh, in the first Spider-Man, the one that gets me, this is the one that like, it gets me every single time. It's the final fight with Green Goblin and Spider-Man. And Green Goblin is, He's taking him. He's like, he's dropping Spider-Man, throwing him all around, bombs, the whole thing. He's beating the ever-living hell out of him. And he's about to finish him off. And he says that he's going to go and take care of his girlfriend. Yeah. And he's going to peel her skin back and all the things he's saying. And you see Spider-Man go from like this, I just got the ever-living crap kicked out of me. I don't to- have the option to stop fighting. Yeah. Gets me every yeah, time. It's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah, it's good. every and time it gets I, me. That's where I like that. Those are the moments that I like. Yeah. So, for me, my favorite character is Wolverine. And it's not because of the claws, though I think that's dope. It's the fact that it, I like him for as much as I do because the same reason why I dislike Superman. I know they're different universes, but like yep. theoretically. Like to me, Superman's not a hero. It doesn't hurt him. When he jumps in front of a bullet, Yeah, right? It just ding, it bounces off. Now, yep. 
Wolverine, it's not going to hurt him either in so much injure him permanently. He knows yeah. he's going to survive the bullet, but it still hurts. Yep. And his claws, read, every time they come yeah, out, they hurt. Like when you read his more, like his more adultish comic books, the ones that are really meant more for older people, like, you know, above 18, the, the graphic novels as they're called. Right. Um, he talked, they talk a lot about how the bullets burn every time, you know, the knife burns every time. And he still jumps in front of the bullet, knowing yep. it's going to hurt, knowing it's going to burn, knowing that the arrow is going to hurt so bad. And he still does it. Yep. And I just always thought that that's me idea every time. of willingness to just be like, yeah, this is going to suck and maybe even kill me, but I'm going to do it anyway. That's hero. That's heroism, right? That's what, yeah. that's amazing. That's why the only character I really, really like on the DC side is Batman for the simple fact that he's not a super, super powered person. And yeah. He's always beat up and willing to push beyond and, and outthink people and do all that cool stuff. Yeah, so, I'm the same way. DC is like, I, I don't need to see a bunch of gods running around. Yeah, it doesn't and do like much for Invulnerable, like, okay, fine. Like, I'll watch it because I'll watch anything superhero. But like, sure, what do I get into? I need to see like, I need to see conflict. I need to I see, see character flaws. Ca yeah, character see character flaws. flaws. Yes, that's the whole thing. I need to see that you, like, I like in the MCU how Tony Stark is has a jerk and he's still a jerk awesome. and he's messed up so many things but he's also amazing and thanos is like horrible and a villain but like he's kind of got an interesting point that's worth talking about and that so his love for his daughter gamora is real like the anguish of having strange this love but well, yeah but, but, so but think about it like with the empath who's for name i forget her name with the uh yeah yeah uh, yeah um it, uh, she, she touches mantis. his head mantis yeah. touches his head and she goes and she goes I, he's 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 anguishing like he he's in he's in deep deep pain and it's like what does he have to be in pain over blah blah, blah. And, and it's the sacrificing of his daughter it's the fact that he's so committed to his goal that he was willing to well he did he sacrificed yeah. not just just not being a sociopath but like that eh, you know whatever yeah but like this like no this hurts him horribly and he does it anyway so that same willingness to do even though it's horrible but just with a more horrible outcome because the, the means of which he's doing simply doesn't justify the ends. Yeah. Um, not a very cool answer. So everybody, I hope you learned something from today. Um, I know I did. Please, uh, you know, do on your own, do your own big sixes. Think about life in terms of being a superhero. I think these are things that make us a better, better person. And if there's more better people, the world's a better place. Uh, if I had to sum up this experience in one word, it would be shareable. Wait, don't leave. If you've never listened to my fancy outro, do it just once for me, please. Okay, if you enjoy Shareable and you find it valuable, there's a few ways that you can support the show. One, you can share it on social media, which I strongly encourage. I mean, it's literally the name of the show, Shareable. Two, you can review it on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're an Overcast user, as many of my listeners are, make sure to click that star button on the episodes that you like. The third way that you could support the show is by blogging about it or discussing it on your own podcast or even by making a YouTube video where you talk about one of the episodes. And then the final way that you can support the show is by supporting it directly on Patreon. You can find the link in the show notes. Now, before I let you go, I want to tell you about one other thing. You see, Shareable is just one of many projects that I'm working on at any given time. I've got another podcast called Rogue. I do a live streaming show every week called The Heroic Council. I've got a blog where I release a blog post twice a week. And if you're looking to keep up with all sorts of different content that can help you grow and become a superhero in life, I want you to check out jeffgibber.me. That's where I list all of my current projects and projects that are coming up in the future, including my forthcoming book, The Lovable Leader. It would mean a lot to me if you could go and check out some of the other things I've worked on because I put just as much of my heart into those projects as I do into Shareable. Thank you so much for being a listener. Thank you for being a supporter. And I hope to see you here on the next episode of Shareable.